So welcome to my lovely native garden with some edibles interspersed. We have purple poppy mallow here in the front interspersed with some of our native violets. Over here I have a tree that's fallen down but I also have some Black eyed, not black eyed Susan, black eyed peas planted around it that'll grow up. And along with the black eyed peas, I also have our native Apios Americana, the American ground nut, which is a native edible. I have a couple of new plants here that I'm bringing in red whiskers. And then I always put a cage over them to keep the squirrels from digging them up. This is Ruelia humilis, the, our native wild petunia. I also have a little patch of strawberries out in the front. I didn't really intend it to be here, but it was here. And a, couple, a couple of our signs with the Native Pollinator Research Project and milkweeds for monarchs. We have an apple tree here in the front. This is a dwarf apple. It's starting to produce. And a hazelnut bush here out in the front and we get a pretty good crop of hazels every year. This is not bloomed yet, but this is our Echinacea, another native. And tucked under here with a good eastern face is a Solidago Drummondii, the cliff goldenrod. Coming up onto the porch, I'll introduce you to a new addition. These are quail. Uh, for Caternix quail. They're singing a little bit this morning. I have in the hazelnut tree or bush, I have a cardinal's nest that I just spotted. And coming down the path, there's some common milkweed, some more echinacea. And here, blooming in the morning, spiderwort, and then Texas green ice, Berlandia texana. Underneath the pear tree, we have uh, our wild violets, also groundsel. This is Lepia salata, the uh, horse mint, one of our horse mints. And then out here in this area, there's the orange milkweed. There's a big liatris that hasn't yet bloomed. And then you'll see a good number of these smaller fern-like plants. That's uh, partridge pea. And that'll bloom later in the season. I also have two pawpaw trees and pawpaws are already starting to fruit. They've got fruit forming. There's some right there. And there are a number of clusters. If you look through the tree, so I should have a good bit of fruit in September. Also along the path, walking up, I have these two, they're non-native, a nepeta or a catmint, but it's a long blooming plant that's good for the pollinators. I have here the aromatic aster, another one of our natives. I also have a little bit of herb presence here. Here's some thyme. I do share that with neighbors. They'd like to come by and get some time for their 
cooking and also here some oregano also in bloom got the little sign for that as well there is some uh, this is the prairie drop seed Sporobolus heterolepsis there's a milkweed that's out of place I'll pull that and then this is the pear tree that collar was an attempt to keep the squirrels out but we got good fruit production this year on the pear tree however it seems the squirrels get most of the pears also in the front this is my view from the porch so I have lots of flowers to look at there's a small waterer for the critters and then a little bird bath as well I have a native willow it's really good for pollinators and then a couple of more native plants in here including the amorphic nessens tucked in there I don't know if it's going to get enough sun and then up against the house this is the north side of the house is celandine poppy which is not blooming now but that has been blooming in the past and of course our wild violets and you'll notice there's some leaf damage which tells me that we've got some caterpillars in here uh, some of our fritillaries host on the wild violets my take a look at my compost bin I wove it from some of the plants here from stakes and then I just throw the compost in the top I have a little top here if I need to cover it over but I just throw things right in there and that's also covered a little bit by the uh, hazelnut tree this is the breezeway and since it's a little shadier here I've got some of the shade plants so there's wild ginger the Virginia bluebells have already disappeared just a little more columbine and then of course the wild violets which have a good deal of leaf damage so I'm supporting a good number of critters back here and and maybe mainly I think that's going to be our fritillary caterpillars then down the breezeway heading to the backyard I have a little pot here of t potatoes I've never had great luck with potatoes so I'm trying just doing it in a big bin and gradually filling the bin with soil as the plants get older a little plant nursery here where I'm keeping some of my newer plants and growing them out I have my asparagus had a good crop this year it's going out to fern And I have these uh, perennial onions, which are great. I just harvest them, and they're always there for me. And the French sorrel in the back. Again, I harvest that regularly. And sometimes I have to whack it back a little bit because it is a little, a little bit aggressive. I have lemon balm here. Pretty aggressive. And a little bit of salad burnet. Also a great uh, green that will self-seed. I always keep a little bit of the plantago, the plantain, the narrow leaf plantain. I call it my band-aid plant. Good for stings or insect bites. This lovely plant is uh, feverfew. This is not the American feverfew. Um, but that's great for headaches. I'm tucked in behind there I've got the gooseberry bush just getting started it's taking a while for that to take root goji berry getting started here I've got had a couple of berries already this spring it's a great what's we call it a superfood 
And then next, black current. I'm trying to propagate some golden current to add. And then in the space between the garages, I have, again, the American groundnut and some sunchokes, like both, both edibles, producing edible tubers. And then against the north end of the shed, I have a, what I call my woodland garden with some native ferns, the Solomon seal, and then a couple other shade plants. Nice big strawberry pe patch. It's really finished blooming now, but because it's got a part that's near the sidewalk and part that's farther into the valley uh, downhill, it has a broader or longer growing season. And in the back, you can see the big clusters of flowers are elderberry. There's also uh, blackberry bushes back there. Then here I have a patch of just general native uh, flowers, a few grasses. So this is my mini prairie right in the middle there to attract the insects and provide for uh, birds as well. I have a, a little bit of attempt to terrace. <coughs> uh, just provide a little more flat space and then and then going down. And I've got several terraces up in the corner there. We'll get to that. But I've got a wattle fence again to, to hold some of the uh, the soil back and, and to begin to create a little bit of a terrace. Coming up on this side, we have black raspberries that are doing quite well, beginning to come into fruit. So I hope for the another month or so, we'll be having some blackberries. I'm trying to get fruit all year long. We've got currants now and blueberries, but those are smaller plants, so they're really not coming into full production. This bed uh, stand, uh, headboard for a bed that I'm using for a trellis. I've got green beans. These are pole beans that are going to grow up there. Got a cutting from a grapevine that's just getting started. Survived the winter. I've got an oak seedling here. My idea is to grow the oak about five feet tall and then cut it and use it. And there's a mulberry on the other side and use the two of them to stake my grapes. I have a little tiny pond here that's covered over by some tiles. Part of it's covered over by some tiles. Adds some diversity, adds a water element to the space and has some native water plants growing in it, including Sagittaria latifolia, which is um, also called duck potato. That has an edible tuber. I have a kiwi vine. Just getting started here. A couple of volunteer sunflower plants. And then this is my kitchen garden. I have beans, uh, the bush beans. The pole beans will be for later in the season. And I've got bush beans here. I've got, as you'll see, a drip line, and that'll go through the whole garden. And there's a tomato plant getting started. I think that might be a brandy wine. Yep. Got a number of different uh, tomato plants. Some I grew from seed, some I've gotten from friends. Also have some lettuce here. I haven't done too well with lettuce. I do have microgreens inside. Um, and coming along, this is, these are soybeans. And then I put a little basil plant and a few tomatoes in there. More green beans. This is the back side of that wattle fence. I always repair it and upgrade it each year. Always needs a little bit of work. 
but it seems to work well. And then these are some that I grew from seed. This is watermelon and um, tomato. And I put them under the cages, again, to keep the squirrels from eating them. And then here are peanuts, just getting, getting their heads out of the ground. I'll get going. I have in the top terrace here, garlic, getting toward being ready to harvest. Hop over the fence here. Then in this top terrace, I'll grow uh, sweet potatoes and cantaloupe. Sign there. Cantaloupe again, right against the drip tape. Have up here also blueberries, a grapevine that is trellised on a mulberry, and this will be this mulberry will be just for primary for trellising. I'll get a few mulberries, but I don't want it growing that close to the house, um, other than as a, a trellis plant. And I have this one cage that I use for a variety of things, but in this case, it's uh, keeping the the blueberries safe. Got a couple of this morning. And I have fig coming up. That bright orange. That's another milkweed plant. I'll show you how that's planted and why it's already blooming so well. Sweet potato, again, right against the drip tape. What I'll do is I'll lay down the drip tape and some of these hot, warm season crops, I'll lay down the drip line and then I'll put in the plants afterward and I'll put them in on the on the drip line. This is a Echinacea paradoxa, the yellow coneflower. I this area tended to wash onto the patio and so I put in some cinder blocks and then planted the native plants into the cinder blocks. And because they're <clears throat> in those uh, cinder blocks, they warm up more quickly, and therefore it's going to flower a little more quickly as well. So that's a sense of the whole domain. It's nice to sit out here on the porch. Just keep an eye on what's going on. I'm coming around behind the plants, I have a small greenhouse. Get a, get a picture of it's just four feet by four feet with that uh, automatic vent with a paraffin vent. Uh, it's great to get a couple of uh, three or four months or excuse me three or four weeks four to six weeks I guess uh, additional growing time at the beginning and the end of the season. I also use it for drying. I'll show you where I've got drying some currants. Actually I've got a couple of things going on here. Uh, the crock pot with a cup in a uh, jar inside of it. I'm doing some solar cooking. And then I have a mesh bag inside of a cage. That's the cage keeps out the squirrels and the mesh bag keeps out the bugs. I'm drying some currants there. And then I'm also drying some eggshells. I'll crush these and then feed them back to the quail uh, to get some more calcium in their diet.